Okay, now let's see how we can use this template to streamline the calculation for impurity. Suppose we are going to classify by home ownership. There are two rows here because there are two possible splits. Either a client is a homeowner or not. I'm going to enter no here, yes here, and yes here. You will see why later. Now I'm going to count the number of entries that a client is a homeowner but do not default. I'm going to use the function called dcount, D-C-O-U-N-T. It takes three inputs. The first one is called database. Just select columns A through E so that it will take the entire input from this range. It is important to include the first row, the label for the data. I'm going to fix the reference too, so I can copy the formula later on. Second input is called field. Let's just do this. Quota double quotation mark ID. Next, criteria. Let's select this range. Now let me explain what you will do. So dcount will take the whole data as input and it will take out the records that satisfy the condition over here. The condition is that no in default, yes in homeowner, anything for marital status and income. So it will it will select all of the records that have no as default, yes as homeowner, and among those records, it will count the number of records that has a value in the column ID. That will return 4 means that there are 4 records with no in default, yes in homeowner, and have a value in the ID column. Likewise, now let's count the number of records that, client, that a client does default. Still, data table here. Sorry, okay, let's select all of the columns here. Steal ID criteria. Now we need to select this so that the criteria becomes yes in homeowner and yes in default. Return one record. Now let's get them up. That's the total number of records that a client is a homeowner. Now calculate the entropy. So it's the fraction of no over the total number of records uh, in satisfying client is a homeowner times log of that fraction using two as base. Okay. But actually there is a special case. Let's say if this number is zero, you find that entropy return an error. To fix that, we will define that if the count is zero, then entropy will be zero. So to incorporate that, we use an if statement over here. If this count is zero, then it returns zero. Otherwise, calculate the entropy using the formula. Okay, that will resolve the problem. We're going to copy this to here, but just paste the formula. There's some problem with referencing, so let's fix it. So that's the entropy for yes. Now let's calculate the entropy for the entire um, entire split. So it's minus sum of these two numbers. Okay. Now let's move on to when a client is not a homeowner, so no here, still no here, still yes here. We can copy this and paste it here, but only pasting the formulas. Okay, let's make sure everything is all right. Okay, now we can calculate the impurity. You can use this function, sum product. 
sum product of this column and this column divide by sum of this column. I leave it you I leave it to you to figure out what sum product is. This is a very popular and important function in Excel. And I also leave it to you to check out that this is actually equ equivalent to the formula we introduced to calculate impurity. Now let's see how we can use this template to construct the decision tree we see in the slide. We have three attributes. We already done the classification by homeowner. Now let's classify the entire data set by marital status. There are three possible outcomes for marital status. So we have we need three rows. So that's why I made an additional copy. And let me adjust the format a little bit. And we need to change the formula a little bit. We need to revise them a little bit. And now we need to enter single married divorce and removing this. Okay. Third, we need to calculate the impurity for income. In this case, we simply need to ch change this to high income and low income. It turns out that this is the lowest impurity, and that's why we first classify um, the records by income. With this, we can draw the first part of the tree as I paste it over here. First, we ca categorize all the data by income and 60% of the records default. 60% because 3 out of 5 over here. Now we can continue to split the low income case. The low income case has two possible attributes to, to classify, marital status and homeowners. So let's start with marital status. There are three outcomes for marital status, status, so I'm going to copy this one. And income need to be low. And the other way of classification for low income is homeowner. So I'm going to copy homeowner because it has two rows. Apparently, this is marital. Okay. When we further classify low income by marital status, it has a lower end impurity than classifying by homeowner. And you can also see that there are a total of five records and five records here. Here is five records because this is a total number of records under low income. And I can color it here. L2 represent level 2, low income, just a note for me that this is the classification for low income in the, lev in the second level of the tree. Now that we know under low income, classifying by marital status has a lower impurity. And this impurity is lower than the impurity of the previous classification. So we can continue to draw the tree like this. We can extend the low income case and classify it by marital status.
Now, under the classification for uh, marital status, you can find that the entropy for sing for married and divorced are both zero. So the result in those splits are pure. So there's no need for further classification in those cases. The entropy for single is one. So we can further classify this case. So let's further classify this case. And at this time, there's only one attribute left, that is home ownership. So let's further classify single clients by their home ownership. Single, single. So low income, single clients, home ownership. It turns out that the impurity is zero. So there's no need to further classify records as well. So let me mark this case. Okay, let me label it. Level three, this is single. And also, I can complete the tree by extending the single case. And that completes the entire entire tree.